This episode of The Honeydew is brought to you by Upstart, Raycon, Talkspace, and Omax CryoFreeze. More on that later. Let's get into the do. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it at Studio Night Pants. I'm Ryan Sickler, Ryan Sickler. Dot com Ryan Sickler on all social media night pants nation I can't say thank you all enough you got your shorts on you got your night pants on y'all comfortable during the virus and I appreciate all that you do uh, make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel you're going to be getting uh, video uh, every Tuesday over there audio on Monday make sure you subscribe to the Patreon I say it's five bucks a month I'm not doing any tears no merch and shit like that. It's five motherfucking dollars. It's $60 a year. I, listen, I know that's a lot of money to some people. I know that's a cell phone bill, a utility bill. I get it. But if you're looking for more of the Honeydew Weekly, it's two shows now, one on Patreon, 60 bucks a year. You can opt out whenever you want. Five bucks, you're going to get four or five shows. Look for a five-week month. Maximize your money. You know what I'm saying? Then it's a buck an episode, and then you can bounce out if you want to. I hope you don't. This will be some really good episodes. We talked to somebody that died. Okay. And I'm going to keep saying it, this poor girl, but two pussies. All right. Um, Facebook fan page, uh, all of it. Sign up, thehoneydewpodcast.com. That's where you can get the merch. Everything is all there for you. All right. And, uh, you know, I, I record here at the Santa Monica Music Center. Uh, whether you live here in LA or wherever you live in the world, thank you, by the way. Some of you have reached out from Canada, Great Britain, uh, to take your lessons. Thank you very much. They offer online uh, music lessons here from locally trained Los Angeles musicians. Go to santamonicamusic.com. Use the code HONEYDO. They're going to waive the registration fee, and they're going to give you a free lesson when you sign up for a package. That link is also on the honeydewpodcast.com. Now that all that is out of the way, uh, you know what we do over here. We highlight the lowlights. These are the stories behind the storytellers. Today's storyteller returns. And I've been super excited. We've been trying to make this happen for a minute. There's a lot of shit going on out there, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Santino is back, Yay! y'all. I, can't, I, want, back. I want him to be clapping to the Come wall. Come on, you clapping, Ash? He's clapping and laughing. <laughs> What's How up, are baby? You, bro? How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good mid-pandemic. I'm feeling okay. You feel like we're mid? You feel like yeah, we're... Midway through. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping, midway that's... through. Midway through. This is the halfway point. We're this is the halfway. second lap. <laughs> I feel. I'm, I hope I'm, so. I I'm, hope it's I think just this is midway. I think we're midway. I think we're uh, we're. Uh, all right. I think uh, we'll be done by this uh, next March. That's right. my guess. That's when it That's started. the Groundhog's guess. That's yeah. a full year. I think it's full year. I all think right. we're. Mid, I think we're just through midway point right now. I mean, you do look back. Before, we're gonna. I just want to say this. I, I look at these old pictures of everybody that had masks on, black and white cats and shit and everything, and mm-hmm. they're like, oh well, yeah, for so long we have. Eventually, we're gonna get there. Yeah. When we don't know, but well, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're healthy. Same, ditto. You you had a little health scare. We're going to talk about here in a minute. <laughs> but before we do, please plug everything, yeah, all of it. Uh, you know what I'm doing right now is because of uh, no touring and no uh, no TV right now. So go uh, check out uh, the Whiskey Ginger podcast, which you've been a guest on. You will be coming I love back, it and then uh, also Bad Friends with me and Bobby Lee. Both of those shows. Uh, go check them out on the YouTubes and then wherever you can download audio podcasts. AndrewSantino.com links you to all that stuff anyway. So go check it out, man. That's fun. That's been fun for me to continue to do that stuff because, you know, that's all that's what we got going on right now. If we can't tour and I can't shoot anything, you know, although I know Bobby did a, a commercial. I was for, mad. And Brennan, Neil called me and did a commercial too. Him and Kevin Hart were doing like a Chase Bank commercial. Oh, really? Yeah. I was like, what's going on? What are you shooting now? Let me come by. Let me walk around in the background. Cash a check. <laughs> Trying to get a little check That's from Chase. Camera check. Can I get it? Can I get? Can I get this on Chase? Can I get this on Chase? No, he. Um. Yeah, they're both two people I know. We're doing productions, commercials, stuff like that. But but nobody's got Dave. Nobody got no. Dave's not coming back. Dave on yeah. FX isn't coming back until. Can you uh, next year. Uh, stream that? Like binge that right now? Hulu baby. On Hulu. Hulu right, baby. Good. They made it's a big so deal good, with Hulu. Dude. It really Thank is. You. It I is. And you're you. great in it, dude. Grazie, grazie. It's a fun show. I hope. I hope. No, we are coming back 100. percent But we. Uh, I'll tell you this. this is, I'm probably not supposed to, but it's fine. But we, um, you know, the show did so well uh, that they bragged about it. FX bragged about it. They put out a press release that was like highest rated comedy they've ever had in history. In history? Wow. In the network's history. Yeah. 
And uh, because they bragged about it, of course, everybody was like, oh, so it did well? They're like, yeah. And we're like, well, aren't you? <coughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, oh, I, I mean, we didn't, I didn't know, it did, we don't know if it did that well. We're like, fan appreciate us. Fan, I think it did pretty well. Yeah. 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 And we were, of course, we were, we were begging them. We're like, we're not going to be able to shoot. We're not going to be able to shoot. So uh, help us out. Give us, a little, you know, give us a little gift, you know? Because I think it's, I think they know everyone is waiting we can't work I just, we can't i can't work nobody can work i'm already on a contract with them so even if i wanted to do something else which doesn't even exist i would have to ask them to let me out to do something else so they got me baby yeah <laughs> got me. fx got me i got you right now yeah so look i want to talk about this because you were like i don't know you had a, a papa f- had a fall you had a fall recently papa had a fall let's talk about and, it and bobby made fun of me for like an hour and a half on the phone what happened you went to the hospital, right? I did. The next morning. I should have gone at night. <sighs> yeah. I had to sleep it off. Well, what happened was, I can see, I got a little scar here by the eye. Um, we had that earthquake two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had been out during the day, all day in the sun. And then that night, I went to my neighbor's house, who I never, I've, we've never really hung out. He was like, come over, have a drink with this other neighbor. Nice guy. I said, yeah, I'll come over. I'll have a drink. So we had a couple of drinks and nothing unusual for me though. Uh, you know, I like to have a couple of nothing big. I wasn't, we weren't, we were just drinking casually talking for like three, four hours. So I go home. Uh, I get in bed. Everything is normal. The earthquake is like 3.30 or something like that and four in the morning. Dude, I popped up so fast. I mean, because I hear stuff breaking. My office used to be where we shot the show. Mm-hmm. Now we shoot it at a different, so my office is- Where I came, I was at your place. That's right, you came to the house. Yeah. And now there's stuff everywhere in that room because it's a dead room now. It's not, I moved everything out. So there's pictures on the floor. There's stuff leaning that's not put up all the way. So stuff was falling and breaking and that's, I'm panicking because I'm like, oh my God, in my mind, even though this isn't real, the dog had been in, in, my, in our room. I thought the dog was in my office. Mm-hmm. In my mind, I had this, you know when you have like a dream and you wake up and you're like, that's what's happening. It wasn't. I think the dog is in the office, so I run into the office. And as I'm running in there, the earthquake and my dizziness and getting up so fast, and I'm sure liquor in the blood is not good, right? <laughs> the I get trifecta. Up. Oh, bro. A one, two, three. I grab on, I start getting dizzy and I grab onto the wall and there's the hallway bathroom is right outside of our, our room. And I sit down on the toilet to, re, to catch my balance because my head was spinning, you know? And as I sat on the toilet, I knew it. I yelled out to her. I go, I'm not feeling good. She and she and she's what? And out like a light. Wait, you were sitting and just tipped I forward? Passed out. And I smacked my face Fuck. against the corner of my sink. Yo, Ooh, I'm so lucky shit, dude. that it wasn't my eyeball. Yeah. I missed my eye by an inch. So I smacked my face and I hit my head on the floor. I was out. I got passed out. And and the so I had fainted, but the All right, let me ask you a huh, question, because yeah. I've knock on wood, I've never yeah. fainted. What do you, are you seeing the circle close? Like, what are you feeling? It feels really, when you faint, it feels really warm. Like it feels really warm. And then you, yeah, you slowly, it slowly is like if you put a blanket over your head like that. It's like, it's like almost instantaneous though. It feels like you could stop it. Your mind is going, your mind is going, I'm going to pass out. I'm going to pass out. But it's, it's, it's like you're, you're not working fast enough. You're not working faster than your brain is thinking. And I hit, must've hit my head. On the sink. So would you go like this, like forward. that way? I went forward, forward and oh, then it fell flat on the floor. Fuck. You hit your head there too. She's sweat shaking me, waking me up. Are you bleeding? Not, not as bad. The cut was was the cut was pronounced. It was pretty pretty deep, but it w- wasn't blood wasn't coming out, which was weird. So I wiped it down. We covered it up. I cleaned. How up. long were you out? Oh, second. I mean, three seconds. What four did it seconds. feel like? I've been I've been out a few times. <laughs> <laughs> mm. We're gonna talk about. I've been that, out a few yeah. times. <laughs> What about this time? But this time, when you when you wake up, you always don't know. Like you know when you see a fight. If you ever see an MMA fight, and you know when 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 the moment they wake up and they do this thing where they're like, mm-hmm. "Nothing's wrong. Why are you? Right, around? Yeah, you know? What's going yeah, on, you guys? think it's annoying that they're you're like, "Well, I'm fine. Leave me alone." Immediately, <coughs> I was like, what, "What? What? What? Why are you freaking out?" Because she was yelling and screaming and shaking me. And of course, then I get up and I look in the mirror and I saw that's what happened. Because in my mind, I thought I went from the toilet to the ground. But I had I didn't know I hit my head. My face was warm, was real hot, super, super hot. And that's when I looked in the mirror and I saw this gash on the side of my head and cleaned it up. And uh we sat awake for a while talking about it. You know, like, are you okay? Is everything okay? I was okay. And the next morning went to the it went to the uh urgent care. Why? 
to get my skull and get my head checked out. You did want you were worried. What was something happening that you were worried? No. Or were you just like no, no not at all. No I just, headache. Nope, no, nothing. In <clears> fact, because <throat> I and that was the other thing. The doctor was like, "You didn't drink that much." I mean, because I told her she was like, three drinks for a guy your size." I mean, I'm six one, two hundred pounds. Yeah, and I had a, a couple of waters, so it's not like the liquor. She was like. It was a combination of you getting up like, too I'm fast. I'm not an alcoholic or anything. I got a <laughs> podcast called Whiskey Ginger. Yeah. I record two, three episodes I was like, lady, a week. <laughs> I drink a bottle a night. <laughs> this ain't nothing, this lady. Nothing. No, I, of course, but I, I... All right, so wait, how old are you now? 36. So is anything starting to... Are you worried that maybe you had a seizure or nope. any, nothing? No, because they like checked that. me all out. Okay. She said it was a combo of... The alcohol in the blood and being in the sun all day probably wasn't helping. She was. She's like, it wasn't. But you got up so fast that your blood transfer, right? In fact, I read an article that my dad had sent me that men in their 60s have the most strokes and heart attacks in the middle of the night from getting up too fast to go t- to piss. So getting up so fast. Just if you get up too fast, yeah. your blood shifts. There's yeah. a big blood shift from when you're when you're laying at resting position mm-hmm. and your resting heart rate to when you're active. And so that's what happens to older dudes. They have strokes and heart attacks in the middle of the night when they get up to piss because the blood shift. Well, that's not my beef, but I got up too fast, had the blood shift, in the middle of the earthquake, which you lose in your equili- right, yeah. equilibrium. In, run, in a dark. In, in the dark. Yeah. And I'm running through the hallway. So I'm not paying attention. I'm a little out of it. And when I sit down on the toilet, I must have just lost all my... Ba- I got up and down and up and down too fast. So she did all my blood work. And this is my... This is... You know, this is going to like this. She does, she does all my blood work. I, I went to a good hospital. Does all my blood work. And then she said, well, you should take a CAT scan if you want. She goes, I, you seem perfectly fine. I said, my neck is so sore. And my neck felt like when you used to get into a fist fight. You know, the next day mm-hmm. when you're like... I feel like a car accident. And I said, well, can I get a CAT scan? She goes, uh, here, we're imaging center is packed for some reason. We can't get you in, but I don't want you to wait. So we're going to send you to Panorama City. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, no. I, I know, Pan. Let me tell you. Bro, no. No. I was like, no. And she was like, you got it. That's the only one that was available. <laughs> Let me tell you about Panorama City. This is a very quick one. I remember when I first moved here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and this was, God, we're talking about. You know, I got here in the second time in 97. So this is honest to God. This is 2000, 2001. We're talking mm-hmm. 20 years ago. Yeah. Okay. Panorama City. Right. I had never, I didn't know what the fuck was. That Same. Sounds, panoramic view sounds, sounds nice. Beautiful. Someone gave me a Walmart gift card. There are no Walmarts out here in LA. There's one up there. But there's one <laughs> in Panorama City. And let me tell you something. I pulled into that fucking parking lot. Yeah. I was like, um, I walked through the st- shit just on the floor. Yep. No one giving a fuck. And I was like, I had never. To this day, I've never seen anything like chaos. that. And that was absolute chaos. That's and what I the was hospital like, looked like, bro. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> if that hospital is anything like that Walmart. They made me put the cat sand machine together. I had to put it together before I got in that thing. I was so nervous. I was so freaked out, man. It was tripping. I was like, this is so shady So up you here. went right from there to Panorama City, mm-hmm. like direct drive? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, man, got in the imaging machine, panicking the whole time. And they call you within two hours to let you know results. And she said, blood came back perfect. She's like, you're, you're, you take care of your She's body. She's like, you're Juan Gonzalez, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, nah, man, I'm Andrew Santiago. Is this Alejandro Santiago? <laughs> it is. Okay. By the way, nobody said there was no English. No English. <laughs> nobody. I was the only one that spoke know, English. She was annoyed I didn't speak Spanish when I checked in. <laughs> yeah, I was like, exactly. they sent me up here, bro. I didn't. <laughs> Baño, baño. I, I was oh, out. I was out of commission. So then they oh, called me, and she shit. said, "She she said blood work was great. She's like, you're healthy, you're in shape, all your blood is good." And she's like, "You just gotta just be careful, something like that, you know." She's like, "It's a freak accident, but you're lucky." And the brain was all good too. Nothing, but like we said, I, look, I got some lumps up there. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. because I've been I've been out five times maybe i worry about it I, I got knocked out in a fight um but i got jumped but i was out for hours like, Joe, so that's dangerous i worry about the longer you're out yeah, yeah the worse it is yeah and literally it's knocked out yeah woke up in a hospital i woke up in a hospital and that's when you're like what you know what's going on and i just I, my eyes were closed and the nurse was right here i never never knew what this lady looked like but all she said was here's some ginger ale you have a major concussion. Just sip it. And I just, I gulped. I was so thirsty. I gulped it. And then from the concussion, everything just puked. Puke. She's like, okay. Right. That's when you know it's bad when you throw up. They say if you throw up, then you're in trouble. Yeah. Because I got so you knocked down in sleep football a few that. times. Yeah. I, yeah. I did go to sleep. Yeah. I know. Me too. But they, I don't, they may have told me not to, but again, 
I don't, I was concussed. I don't remember. So I did concussion protocol because of this. And I, mm. she said I did not have a concussion. I mean, so you could have played next Sunday. I could have played. All right. I could have, right. I could have played that next morning. Okay. okay. All you right. Know I would have showed up. <laughs> I know you would. Like Santino's here. His eye, he's got a wonky eye. I'm looking the other way. I'm like, let's go. Let's go. Come he's on. got a pronounced cut, but he's good. It's pronounced, <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> I was ready to rock. No, but they, but she said it was fine. But I had been concussed before, so I knew it wasn't a concussion. What's the first time you went out? Was it knocked out, passed out? What happened to you the first time? You said you've been out a few times. Yeah, probably four or five. Really? Oh, yeah. What's the first one? I fell out of a tree. <laughs> so knocked out. Knocked out. <laughs> knocked out. <laughs> fell on my head. For real? How old were you? Mm, 12. Where are you? 11 in Chicago? or 12. Yeah. Yeah. In Is the park. In the park. Okay. Uh, um, Climbing not so high of a tree, maybe six feet, seven feet off the ground the limb was, but I fell backwards on my head. But we were, I was getting a, uh, I was getting a wiffle ball that got stuck in the tree. Wiffle balls are bound to get stuck in the tree. I get up there, I'm look, I'm reaching for it and I slipped. I how, how many times did you climb this tree or climb trees prior thousands. to this, right? So yeah. that's why I was being careless. Mm -hmm. And even if you did fall, I, you, you used to fall out of a tree, you'd land, you'd be fine. You know, maybe yeah, land 12. on your side. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're fine. But I, I landed on the side of my neck, and and that I was out out, and I was out. I don't now really you've, remember. You've touched it. that spot twice now, so how do you know that? That it was over here. Yeah, that's where I, you touched when you said you hurt your neck. You said my neck's hurt. That's why they sent you to Panorama this City. Side, this side. <laughs> <laughs> they want, yeah. this you know what's neck. so funny? I think she did that just because she didn't really like me that much. <laughs> She's like the image the imaging center's full. Nah, we gotta get you up to pan. We gotta or, get to or they were all going out for drinks and shit, and she didn't want them being yeah. late to something. She goes, you, you know it. what? I think it's full. I think that yeah. I think we've got to go. I see them at Jalapeno Jacks or whatever. <laughs> Slamming on margaritas. Way, like, yeah, I'm sure, that's mine. <laughs> yeah, I fell out of a tree <laughs> when I was twelve and conked myself cold. But do you remember fault? Do you remember the missing a brand? Do you, what happened? No. I remember, like, I remember, I remember the the event, but I don't remember the specifics of when it happened. I think I told you on the other, the last time I was here, I told you about when I got knocked out in basketball. I think I remember, I told you that story. You just remember, made me remember a time I got knocked out that I forgot about. Fell on my neck. I got my legs taken out from Your me. neck uh, again? Fell on my head. On basketball. Hard. I got my legs taken out. Yeah. So I fell backwards. But I remember that. I remember getting up and, and I wait for a sub. That's how that's how committed I was, bro. I wait for a sub. I go, sub in, sub in. And they were like, sit down. <laughs> sit down, bro. My stepson, uh, it's, this one scared me. He did the same thing in high school a couple years ago. He's he's in that growth spurt. He, like every time I see him, he's taller now. Uh, was he a big boy? He's that's skinny as shit, but yeah. he's six, two or three already at 17. Like, Whoa. He's built like he's got that Randy Moss build right now. He's got to put like a sw he's got a swimmer's build. He yeah. needs to put some meat on him. Right. Uh, but he went up when he was just starting to learn his height. You know, he's starting to realize, oh, I might be able to dunk. So he went up, he dunked and he wasn't used to, you know, you're used to coming down at a certain, mm -hmm. you know, speed. And, yeah. He held on and then slipped. And his hands let go because he he swung under the momentum. Yeah, boom, right on his head. They and you know, you're at school. They wouldn't let his ass up. They put no. him in the fucking crazy stretcher. You know the thing yeah. it scares the fuck out of you. It's just protocol. But right. they're wheeling him out. So now we joke about it. But you know that shit was scary. When it happens, it's fuck. scary. Yeah. yeah, when it happens, it's scary. When I fell on my neck, my mom was panic but but of all the times i got knocked out i think i told I'm you that now. other story I too once. i think i told you when i got knocked out in junior high football i got sm i got murdered I, I think i told that on this show the, did I, don't, I? I don't remember it i uh, look but what? i've been knocked out twice See, i yeah. forgot one of them yeah, you got some fatty tissue i'm gonna there. tell you i was um first time we went roller skating ever at a rink <laughs> there was the main <laughs> yeah I've, i don't know how old i'm under 10 but there's the main rink and then there was a practice rink sure and the practice rink was just a smaller version but it had for whatever reason, metal, you know, like rails. Oh, guard rails. Yeah, oh, yeah in the yeah, middle yeah. that you could grab Yeah, on. I remember that. And I just fucking ate it. And I woke up. Face? Yeah. Ooh. Crushed. And then I woke up. My my dad's taking me to the ER to get, you know, same shit. Concussion and all. He's like, yeah, you got knocked out. I'm like, I'm like from roller skating. How long were you out? <laughs> With roller Probably skates. longer than I thought. I just, I just you remember. The ER I just, with, I, you know, that's a, I think exactly what I did. I hit like the temp area where you just go down. You're just down for a second. You're like, what? Sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. But I wasn't. I had never roller skated. So it wasn't like I was like, get off me. I'm fine. I knew I was not fine. <laughs> 
Help me. Help. I was like, nah. Help me out. Some shit just happened. I, I got know. smoked junior high football. I got knocked out helmet to helmet. Oof. That was bad. And then I took a nap in college. I got knocked out in college. In a fight? Or yeah. Did you really? And I took a nap. <laughs> What I, I want to hear all we about got, this We fight. got worked. We, <laughs> we got worked. We got worked. Where were we you? We were in an apartment complex in Arizona, at Arizona State. Uh, and a dude was, had, there was a dude that stormed out of this party and got in this car and almost hit uh, one of the people that we were with. And then it was like, got out of his car and was talking to you because somebody smacked on his hood or something. Like, yo, you know, this is a busy complex at night, college and he gets out of this car and he's yelling and talking shit and someone from where he just came from heard and it was like 15 of them and like four of us. And it escalated within seconds. Yeah. It wasn't even like, it. it college was like, oh, what's up? What's up? It was, you get older and you're like, you're taking your time. You're like, I don't want to fight. You're like, I don't want to fight either, man. Man, let me just, I don't even stretch you. You know, you better, you know, like, let me, I'm going to walk away. I'm going to come back. Yeah. I'm going to be the bigger man. Yeah, no. Uh-uh. We just started swinging and, um, it was inevitably like two on one, almost every one of us. M my friend Colin got it way worse. I mean, he was, he's a big boy. He's a swinger. He was going after everybody. He didn't care. He was, he was, he was tough, but he got it bad. I mean, he got his face scuffed up because the concrete, he went down yeah. to the concrete. M not the same for me. I'm with my friend Travis and we're running around and I see one and I don't see another one. And I got whooped on the back. <laughs> of, I got hit in the back of the head. That'll knock you cold out anybody. anytime. Yeah. Not the front. The front, you can take a couple, but I got hit in the back of the yep. head and here, I woke and up if, on rocks. If you watch the NFL, anytime they hit the dude right here on that side temple area, Good night. you just see him. You see yeah. him just Well, drop. you see the body go yeah. yeah, I woke up on the rocks. The I, rocks? Yeah, it was, Arizona, bro. There's no yard out there. It's a bad place to fight. <laughs> so all, was the fight over when you woke up or was it still well, happening? For me, it was. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I woke up. I was gone. Bye. <laughs> I'm out of here. But I started walking. I started walking, walking the other way. Away. Yeah. Innocent, innocent, innocent. I'm walking. We got we got bad. And the next morning we had we had gone back to the dorms and we probably had gotten high or drank our our, our way through the night and were bummed. I mean, everyone was really upset. Yeah, that's a tough L. Well, we got we got yeah, walked. We got walked bad. Yeah, that's a tough one. And the next morning we were out eating breakfast or whatever. Looking around at everybody. I mean, it was just it was so sad, man. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like just loose skin, busted lip, you know, like dried blood on the neck, you know. <laughs> Over easy eggs are running down your face. <laughs> Meanwhile, those guys are out there having burritos. Just like, we, we fucked those yeah. guys. Oh, up. man, we, I'm hungry. We, we, they smoked us. We fought so hard. I'm hungry. Let's take a quick break and tell you about our first sponsor, Omax Cryo Freeze. Living with chronic pain is the worst. It's more than a feeling of discomfort. It can affect your whole life. Many of you have probably had some type of pain that's prevented you from relaxing and sleeping or stopped you from exercising. Perhaps it's been ongoing for a few weeks now and it hasn't improved with any of the treatments you've tried. Enter Omax Health. If you're looking to get rid of nagging muscle joint pain immediately while providing long lasting recovery, then you need to try the natural breakthrough pain relief solution, cryo-free CBD roll-on developed by Omax Health. This non-prescription triple action pain relief roll-on is specially formulated to block pain receptors, reduce inflammation, and improve muscle and joint flexibility. And the best part is this 100% natural CBD-powered remedy works its magic within 10 minutes of application, and relief lasts up to 8 hours, which is much longer than the over-the-counter products. I've been telling you guys since December, I've had this pull in my neck. I've been pumping that stuff on it. If you've watched, my elbow has been getting numb and stuff, and that Omax, boom, oh, it's gone. Omax Health is offering my listeners 20% off a full body cryo free CBD pain relief roll on plus free shipping. Now, this discount also applies towards any product site wide. So just go to omaxhealth.com today and enter code HONEYDO. That's O M A X health.com and enter code HONEYDO to get 20% off cryo freeze and site wide. Our next sponsor is Upstart. Now, during these economically turbulent times, everyone's looking for a way to feel more financially secure, and I don't blame you. So if you're still needlessly throwing money every month at high-interest credit card debt, it's time you checked out Upstart, the revolutionary online lending platform that knows you're more than just a credit score. Now is the time to find out how low your Upstart rate can be to help pay off high-interest credit card debt. Now, unlike other lenders, Upstart can reward you based on your education and your job history in the form of a smarter rate. So you don't need a degree or a diploma to apply, though. 
Upstart lets you skip going to the bank because it's completely online. They offer loans from 1000 to 50000 so you can consolidate your debt into one easy fixed rate payment. Upstart makes it fast and simple to check your rate, and since it's just a soft pull, it will not affect your credit score. The hard pull happens if you accept your rate and proceed with your application. And the best part, if the loan is approved and accepted, most people get their funds the very next business day. Now, over 400,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards or meet their financial goals. And I know quite a few of you have, man. You guys hit me up and say it's the easiest thing you've ever done. It's the best thing you've ever done. Um, and I appreciate you supporting the show. And uh, I'm telling you, if there are people out there that did it, you should hit them up and let people know about it. Uh, and free yourself from the burden of these high interest credit card debt and get back to using your money your way with Upstart. See why Upstart has a 4.9 out of 5 rating on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash honeydew to find out how low your Upstart rate can be. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes. That's upstart.com slash honeydew. Now let's get back to the do. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm a little some. No, so we got, so we, yeah, that was probably my fourth or fifth time that I had been put to bed sports mostly were the things that put me to bed almost always i got hurt in sports doing something stupid i knocked a guy out and this oh my god i knocked a guy out for so long i actually got emotional about it because i didn't know if i really hurt him yeah this pothead that used to come around freshman year who wasn't even in our school you know he was like dropping off weed and you're like hey man what, like what classes are you in he's like i'm 38 you know like he wouldn't <laughs> it's like i'm like oh shit i thought you were in school he was like uh he, he said um I saw you guys hooping the other day at the gym. I should have, uh, out, outside. He's like, I should have, um, I should have said, I should have said, what's up? I wanted to play. He goes, you, he's like, you can jump. Can you play? Um, have you ever played, uh, uh, ultimate Frisbee? And I said, nah, that's not really for my shit. You know, he's like, come try one night. So of course one night I was bored and I was like, I'll go over there. It's, it's Monday or whatever it was. I go over there. Is that the shit I see on uh sports center stuff where those dudes are crazy diving Bro, like yes. on a, on a football field, yes, right? Yeah. Yes. And we've used to practice on ASU's men's practice field. They used okay. to let them play out there. So we would go out there and it was bright lights. It was great. In the middle of the night, they'd leave those lights on till like a midnight. And, Cause it was for rec. It was by the rec center, which is not there anymore. But I'm learning the game, and as I'm learning, I'm loving this shit because I'm I was a little bit more athletic than most of these dudes. These what is the is, is there what are the rules? Is it like any other sport out there that you well, once you catch it, you can only take like one two step. Well, you can take two steps on the catch, and you can't move. Then you have to stay in your spot and pass it, right? But you throw it, and as you catch it, you can take two steps as you land, and then you have to throw it again. You know? So is it like basketball, but without advancing with a dribble? You get yeah. it. You're allowed two steps, and then it's kind of it. like it's kind of like. Uh, but 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 football in mindset, right? Because okay. you have to get into an end right, zone, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm learning it and I'm loving it. And then I'm learning I can jump pretty I can jump pretty fucking high. I've always been able to jump and I've always been able to like kind of leap out of my shoes. Well, there's a dude. He's much shorter than me. And there's a there's a frisbee going way towards the end zone. And I'm like, oh, I'm picking this off for sure. Like there's no doubt. I jump at the same time he jumps, and as I'm grabbing it, my elbow hits him cold in the face. I mean, I don't know if I hit him in the eye. What, I don't know where, but I went like this to grab it out of the air and poof, like that, dude, I knocked him out in midair. I mean, it, I almost heard him snore. <laughs> he was in the air I don't know, as he went down and he smoked his head. Yeah, you know, he was uh, it, out. That's what's, it's that. The bounce. B yeah, that well, bounce it's and grass. that snap it's and that grass, bounce. right? Yeah. So he, he bounced and everyone was screaming at me. And I'm just thinking, Why? hey man, I just went for the thing because they said I was being reckless. I don't. They were playing a little bit softer. Hey, I, it's ultimate frisbee, man. <laughs> it ain't just some regular frisbee. Yeah, this ain't regular B, bro. Ulti B. All right, puss. I didn't sign up for this shit. Some bitch ass shit. Yeah. So of course I, I, I felt bad, but then, dude, he was out. I don't know, two minutes, three minutes. I mean, it was bad. That's a long time. We were standing there the whole time, and I, I started to have a little bit of a panic because I was like, holy Is shit. Is he breathing though? At the yeah, he was breathing. But he kept like, uh, and was mumbling and shit. <laughs> it was bad, That's dude. Scary. You see pieces of his brain trying to put it back together. Like, you know, it's, There's definitely some brain damage. Oh, bad. Yeah. And of course, then they call an ambulance. Like, an ambulance come. And I, I felt so guilty, dude. I felt so guilty. I was like, I fucked this guy up. All right, next man up. <laughs> Let's go. Sup? This is why sup? we keep 15 on the roster, Let's yo. Let's go. Get us up. <laughs> Get him out. Get him out. Get him in. Let's go. Did he wave somebody in Hell for him? No. Fuck no. no. Yeah, no. God he wasn't an athlete. Right. <laughs> Get up. I felt so bad for knocking this little dude out. 
I smoke. I smoked him with my elbow. Frisbee. And look at these things. I mean, this is, yeah, might as well be a, 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 a pickaxe. I mean, I got bony elbows. Nailed him in the. That was bad. That I regret. I regret. I feel bad. I shouldn't have gone. Well, I because I. You know when you know in sports when you're going up against somebody that you're gonna. You know you've got the advantage. Mm -hmm. I knew I I could have played it a little bit safer. I probably was trying to show off because. I didn't need to jump as early as I jumped. I didn't need to backflip. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't. Woo! After I, I did, knock him yeah. out, I'm break dancing on top of him. Hey, hey! I didn't need to do the worm next to him while he was. Down. <laughs> As it, you, in sports though, you know when you have the upper hand, you got it. It's like you just you want you want to show up a little bit when you're like, oh, I know I can beat this guy. Whatever that is, I I'm 100 percent with you. If it was a man. On the field, it didn't matter to me. I, I was always like, you'd play in a co-ed softball league. You'd see that one dickhead dude. That, like, we had a guy yeah. in a co-ed softball league one time. He was pitching. And this girl's round in third. It's a co-ed softball let league. Let it go, bro. Bro did not let it go. And he <laughs> fucking charged home with that ball. <laughs> and he held it in the mitt so that he could lower his shoulder what and not dick. drop. And he, he he fucking broke that girl's collarbone. Sure. And man, we piled on that yeah, motherfucker. What a fucking but asshole. he was one of those like it's 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 sports. I'm like it's it's co ed softball. Like if this was a bunch of dudes and you did that, you yeah. first of all, you wouldn't have done that if no. that was a dude. No, yeah, no, that you well, wouldn't that, have done that. That's what's so funny though. We You're played that guy. I played in a league. I played in a men's league. Anybody who plays softball, I don't know what it is about softball, but men's softball, they're all stretching for something. They want the old days back. So it got so competitive. We ended up quitting. Our team, we won. We I think we won the you championship. Quit the league? Yeah, we quit. I think we won the championship. Well, because we got <laughs> right, we got yeah. we got it was so tumultuous by the end of it. We didn't want to do it anymore. We 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 got in arguments, uh, uh fights, people would leave. I mean, it was endlessly fighting. They didn't like it. We were good. We had a bunch of young, good guys, but we would bring wooden bats. And you, they all hit aluminum. Mm -hmm. And they were like, no, you can't use wood. And I was like, Why? wood's going to go less. For, That's right. Yeah. It's to your advantage They for didn't me. like us using wood, but we all loved, I loved hitting a wood bat. Yeah. So we all brought wood and they complained endlessly. I was like, this goes less for, the aluminum goes way further when you, and it was 16 inch, no glove. So the ball, you know, you, oh, yeah, the they're fatable. huge. Mm -hmm. You hitting that far with a wooden bat is tough, but we liked wood just because I, I like the feel of wood. I just, it's to me, I feel like you could have more control with wood. Well, they hated us for that. And so they, every time we would get into some kind of fight or argument and, and there was only, and there was only an ump, a one rotating ump because it was a cheap league. So you had to make your own calls half of the time. Oh God. This just sounds like fist fights at every yeah. base. And yeah, shit. of course. Of yeah. course. It was happening. He's out. He's in. He's out. We would fight all the time. I had to quit. I couldn't do it anymore. I was like, this was too much, but it was 16 inch, no glove, Chicago softball. That's what they play back home. No gloves, you know, jamming fingers all day. And it's nothing but arguments over, you know, who's out and who's in, and 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 the pitches was always a debate over whether that was a strike. Right. I had to quit. I got I got so over it. I was like, mm -mm. I don't want. There's no men's sport I want to play anymore in an organized league. I'll play pickup basketball. I'm not playing an organized game nope. ever again. No. I'm done. I'm done. I got no need. Also, you want to get hurt. You want to get hurt That's at your how, age yeah. and be that guy? Because it's not necessarily that there's anything wrong. It's that it's that asshole out there that wants to hit you with the blind side right. or do some bullshit to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then you end up, you know. What's up, bro? We're just playing, bro. You were playing. I, you were there. I, 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 didn't see, I didn't see you there. I didn't know. I, my bad. That asshole. That's your ankle. Yeah. I, I, I got over the idea of feeling good. I think, I, I don't know if I told you. I keep thinking, saying, I think I told you, but I was in Charlotte. And uh, I wanted to go play YMCA. Uh, I want to go play pickup basketball just for some exercise. I actually went to go shoot by myself. You're on the road and just wanted yeah. to get out? Yeah, I just wanted to go shoot because I usually I run. I run every, every day. And it was so hot. I was like, damn, I got to go. I'm going to go in the gym and I'm going to go shoot and just kind of run around the track. There's a game going on. And all these kids are, you know, young, 15, 16, 17-year-old, athletic, black kids. I mean, just unfucking real Jumping out of the gym and shit. And one dude sees me and he's like, hey, yo, you, you want to hoop? And I was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm good, man. I don't, I have tennis shoes on. I didn't even have, he goes, oh, come on, man. We need one. And I was like, all right. You all ain't right. wearing those bike shorts for nothing, but. <laughs> I, go, I go, he's got underwear inside of him, so I should be good. <laughs> yeah, he's have a mesh lining. Yeah. I think I go. I should be all right. <laughs> I get over there. 
I'm <laughs> feeling it. That's gonna keep you I'm on. feeling it. I'm feeling right it. Right away. I'm too, feeling huh? it. I'm right having away. a good time. Just in the huddle and shit. It's just I'm feeling good. They're letting yeah. me in their circle. I'm dishing a little bit. You know, I dropped I drop a couple of shots. I was like, oh shit. All right. I'm feeling okay. Well, we come around the next break. Sure enough, there's some young 15 year old fucking just athlete takes off from like the third hash mark. <laughs> This LeBron James is right on my fucking face. I mean, I'm not even I'm not even defending Plus him. This is nuts right oh, yeah. on your head. I'm not even defending him. I turn to just get up in the air a little bit and it's just like <laughs> my di- his his dick and my arm just yeah. fused to my face. Not I, I mean, think that was a charge, guys. Yeah. I'm called a charge on that. <laughs> but they the gym went nuts. You know, oh, oh, oh no. you don't got that old ass redhead. Oh shit! You dog got Opie Taylor. Look, he got, he got, he got, how'd he do? He got his ass dunked on. I got shit on for like 25 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And it, <laughs> so trying great. to regain some fucking. I'm sitting on the side. I'm like, good game, man. Good game. And nobody, not one kid wanted to say good game to me. Nobody. They were like, nobody. Oh, yeah, man. You can go home. Go back to the hotel. <laughs> I don't need to play that shit. I was like, I'm done. I'm hey, out. fuck your show tonight too, man. <laughs> this unfunny motherfucker trying to give us free tickets. It's dunked on the old ass. <laughs> they got me bad. Yeah, I was the joke of the. I was the joke of the night. Yeah, they were all waiting. But They're... I'm glad I could give that to him. I was like, okay. That's for your IGs, everybody. That's for your IG yeah, 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 story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. There. I made a, I'm sure I made a story. <laughs> you definitely are on Because you know he. Because you know he was. He was dribbling up court, turned to his, turned to his friend. He was like, oh, hey, yo, film yeah. this. Watch this. Turn Watch it on. This right. I'm a hot sauce right here real quick. <laughs> yeah. That was the end of my uh, public uh, pickup game That's it, career. right? It's done. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll play horse. I'll play some horse. I'll, I'll, like, I'll play horse. some horse. Yeah, some driveway it, horse. Right? Yeah. yeah, I'm not even going to the gym. I'm doing driveway horse. <laughs> That's it. I'm about off the fucking garage roof. And, yeah. And yeah. 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 Spe- oh, speaking of roofs, you, I want to jump to that because you had to fix your. What's something happened with fixing your roof? Yeah, bro. I'm up there. My roof. I had to fix my roof Why? because we had a leak. We 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 got the house, and of course, as you know, everybody jokes. You know, it's like oh, it's a never end. It's a money pit. Yeah. The first rainstorm we had in our living room just the ceiling Bad? fucking came through. Yeah. Real bad. Didn't damage anything in the house, but, but it, it ruined everything. Right, ruined yeah. that up. So we thought we got a side patch job done. Um, this guy, you know, did tar- tarps up there. So he got to let it dry out. Then we'll look at it. Well, the rain kept coming. The rain rains here for like three weeks and then never again. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Right, yeah. It's just like window gone. So when it's all said and done, we're trying to get the roof fixed. And of course, this dude uh, is up there fixing the roof. And I'm thinking, okay, all should be good now. We're all good. He said, well, give me the hose. I got to put the hose up here to show it's a no leak on the unit. You know? <laughs> he's uh, he's Japanese. Yeah, and, I can uh, tell. Yeah. He said, give me the hose. I throw, throw up the hose. I throw up the hose. And he goes, okay, it should be good. Go inside and look. He's got the hose turned on high. I mean, it's as if it's a, just it's coming into the house. I'm like, bro. <laughs> no way. Yes, dude. Yes. He, he, he thought... So the problem was the air conditioning unit guys didn't communicate with the roofing guys. They needed to fix the shell at the exact same time. Because here in LA, people, some people, wherever you're watching this, might not know. We put, a lot of them, old houses put HVACs on the roof. You don't do that Swamp where I'm from. Swamp coolers, yeah. Yeah, you don't do that right, shit where I'm yeah. from. It's on the floor. Yep. It's outside of the house. Outside the big fan unit yes. on next to the house. This is on our roofs. Yes. A lot of these old houses have them on the, the HVACs on the roof. And our old ass roof supporting a 10 ton unit you know, and so pieces had collapsed around. Well, what they fixed didn't fix the shell of the unit. So it had just cracked more because they were up there fucking with it. I mean, they put a crane up there, lifted it up. They must not have put the pressure right. So I got a, I, I, I fixed a hole in my fucking ceiling in my living room three times now. I mean, it's, I feel like I'm going to. What a, did the dude do when he did move? Did he Nothing. come back? He didn't come back and fix no, it? No, no. He goes, oh, mom, you got to talk to the guy. Then do the uh, air conditioning <laughs> and unit. he just drove. Didn't give a fuck. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's got to be the unit. We fix our part, you know? Okay. I'm playing this juggling game of whose fault it is, you know? He says it's you guys. No, I mean, we fixed our thing, you know? He couldn't, his la- his lack of concern was almost beautiful. When I showed him, I said, I, I told That's him. That's an I, art, isn't no, it? No, couldn't. He came down. He came down and I showed him the damage from inside. He's like, yeah, you know? He's going to dry. It's okay. He's going to dry. I'm like, but I. I have to live through all this, sh- this shit. He's like, yeah, you know, what are you going to do? You got to call the AC guy. You know, he's going to fix it. So they passed the buck. And so mm-hmm. now I'm living with, I have another hole in my roof now. Dry because no rain. But I have to live with that every day. So Until I've, when? 
whenever I can get a guy to come out and fucking get up in the during attic. During the corona. Yeah, during corona. You want to come out during rona and get in my fucking attic? Get asbestos and and get corona? And the virus. It's impossible, man. I'm fucked. So I'm going to live with a hole in the middle of my fucking ceiling. Oh, shit. But the beauty of it is, the beauty of it is, uh, I've come at peace with my house stuff. Love I you. swear to God, I've finally been like, okay, I can't help it. I was arguing about stuff with the old lady all the time about like, well, we got it and this is fucked up and this is fucked up. And now I'm like, it's okay. I get why parents at some point, uh, they just like rel relinquish this anger that they're like, it is what it is. I'm not going to fix all that shit. All that You can't fix all the things. All no. And so you're going to have I'm kids. I'm at peace. You can't. Listen. Let yeah, me let just it tell be. you. I'm going to tell you what my friend that had a kid young told me. Mm. You can't have nice shit. It's you over. Kids. It, yeah. It's don't. Don't, yeah, don't. don't bother going and buying a $5,000 couch because mm -mm. your kids are going to piss on it, yeah. shit on it, crawl, color on it, crawl on it, walk on it, cut it. Right. Yeah, just get the $200 one. Just get the fucking <laughs> cheapest, <laughs> comfortable me, thing. I know now that I'm... Well, I mean, I don't really like fancy shit anyway, but it just like... I stopped caring as much about yeah. particulars about being like... Because I'm a really nitpicky OCD guy. Me too, dude. But the anxiety ooh. of like, well, I got to get this done in this room and this room. Not at room, the house yeah. anymore. I've I've learned to go, Good. oh, this is out of control. I can't control all mm -hmm. this. That's crazy to think I'm going to be able to like fix this, fix that, fix that. Even I can fix stuff with my own hands. But at some point you're like, I don't even want to waste the time and the money getting a guy because it's manageable without it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not like... It's not like the electrical's broken or that it's just right. this is a small shit that I can't help at some Cosmetic point. Cosmetic something. It's bullshit. That, yeah. yeah. Even if it's not, even if it's like certain functionality. You know what I mean? Like one of the doors doesn't lock all the way. It's like I'm, we figured it out. <laughs> you know, like yeah. we got another secondary lock in there. I was like, oh yeah, the the jam doesn't fit because this chain is I'm like, all right, man, well then put a fucking board underneath that or something. <laughs> I don't know. Like fix it. Just temporary fixes. You learn why people do that with houses, that they just temp fix stuff because it's a pain in the ass, dude. At some point. I've let it go. So in my heart, the hole is staring me down when I'm watching TV at night, but I'm like, it's okay. I just got to let that shit go. So I've learned to like, let it go. Cause put it in perspective. You know what I mean? Like it's not yeah. that big of a deal. No, especially with everything going on right now. Yeah. That's, yeah. What, that's what I mean. It's not that big. It used yeah. to drive me bananas. This thing before the pandemic was like, you know, I'd be calling, I'd be on the road and be like, did you get the roof guy to come? Yeah. Well, why isn't he there? I'd be <laughs> losing it. No need. I was like, let it go, let it go, let it go. I might yelling at her for no, you know. <coughs> I let it go. I've I've learned I've learned to let it go. Um, tell me about Tampa. What's this Tampa story? That's why I don't know how many stories I've shared with you about because we did a lot of we did so much talking about sports and injuries. That's why I thought maybe it was the same one. I have mm. a scar on my leg that's about two inches long from Tampa. Um, and if this is a repeat from the first time we did this, uh. Uh, then that's okay. We'll that's, just. I don't remember it. I don't remember it either. But I you've told so many stories in so many podcasts. But with you, it's it's sports or injury related for some reason. We did, <laughs> you know, trauma, bro. Well, I came out of the I came out of the Tampa Improv, and uh, oh, this wasn't even a sports thing. No, well, to me, life is a sport, my friend. So I never give up. Fair enough. I come out of the Tampa Improv, and there's a fight that breaks out. And long, a long story story short, I grab a woman who's falling, pretty much into me. And I grab her and what's the after your show? Like bouncer is in an argument with a guy who's leaving. I'm outside saying hi to people. Yes. And a guy is in an argument with the bouncer because I'm sure he's too fucked up. And my guess is he's trying to take a drink out of the room, which we've seen before. Yeah. Hey man, put it, you know, and they're trying Can't to take the out. hurricane glass out, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. I Come on, for man. It's fourteen dollar <laughs> drink. Fourteen eighty five. I fucking <laughs> pay, bitch. I'll take they say bitch. They call him bitch once, yeah. and, the, and the security guard is like, "What's yeah. up, dude?" You know, they're waiting to fight. They want to yeah. fight. These bouncers want to fight. Yeah, they're paid to fight. They're paid to fight. They're so, just sitting there most times, not yeah. able to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why they're always crossing their arms. Right. They're pissed. Like, so like, I want to knock I someone just out. Fucking hit somebody. <laughs> God damn. He, so he's they're shuffling him out, and they're fighting. They're scrapping with him, and they call security, and the people are getting pushed out of one door. You could exit out of that side door because the second show was coming to the front. Well, I'm on the patio, and it's pitch black. I can't see a goddamn thing, and a woman is being like pushed into me. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I grab this lady. And as I'm stumbling, I stumble like, you know, to not cause myself to fall. And I smack my leg on something I can't see. And it hurts like a motherfucker. But I kind of just let it go. It was an umbrella stand without an umbrella. Those metal, oh, like a commercial yeah. umbrella stand. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it's only a foot and a half off the ground. I can't see that. In the, it's pitch dark. Well, the night's going on. And I think nothing of it, but it's it's throbbing. I'm, I'm painful. And about an hour goes by and I feel that my sock is wet because there's no cut in my jeans. I lift up my jeans. Well, it had gone, it had it cut my skin. You. Yeah, it punctured oh, my fuck. skin. 
I was bleeding into my fucking socks. And I don't know if you know about Tampa, but you know, you know, Tampa's hospital. Uh, Panorama City. Yeah, all Panorama over. City 2.0. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bro, I go in there. I'm ble- I'm, pr- I'm profusely bleeding. And the woman is like, nah, I can't do nothing about it. <laughs> nothing. She yeah. goes, it's on the shin. They didn't give a fuck. She goes, wrap it. Just wrap it up. I can't butterfly it. It's right on the shin. It's, it's literally right on my shin. The scar's like this big. And I go back to the hotel and I've wrapped it up so tight. And in the middle of the night, I'm shuffling around. I must have moved around so much. The wrap came undone. I soaked a hotel bed in blood. For real? Dude, so much more blood than I've ever seen in my entire Holy life. Holy shit. It was, it was like, <laughs> there was a fucking murder scene. I'm sure, and I was checking out that day. So I'm sure the woman was like, oh boy. You know what she comes <laughs> You want to turn down? I'm like, yeah, you got to fucking. I bled, I bled out that. I mean, it bled out of the mattress so much. It had gone. I mean, it had gone through to the mattress. I bled so much through the sheets, and I had this. Then I, I went and got it checked out when I got here. Same thing. They couldn't stitch it, and because it, it kept opening up, it's on my fucking shin. It would be like something yeah, small would. Splits. Oh my god, there's yeah. no, nothing to it. And finally, a week or two later, it finally started to really like heal up itself. But I have a permanent scar now because of Tampa. That's and that when I look at it, I always. That's Tampa in my mind was that for the rest of my life was like, that would happen in fucking Tampa. I don't hate Tampa. West side of it's Florida. just that would happen yeah. in Tampa. Some dumb shit. You know, I like, I remember, like, I don't have a bad taste about Tampa, but it was such a weird world. That city, Ebor, is so strange. It's like, you can still smoke inside at bars, which blew really? my fucking mind. Yeah, and this was how many years ago? Four or five? I That's mean, they could, yeah. still, they could still smoke. Chickens are in the street. Roosters are all in the fucking streets. Scientology's, uh, uh, what's it called, for, uh, is there. Headquarters? Yeah, but what's the one? The Sea Org. That's where it is. Oh, oh really? That's I didn't where know it is. That. Yeah, oh, it's okay. right around the corner. And it's Cigar Avenue because of all the all the Cubans that used to mm-hmm. be there in Ebor. It's, it's this beautiful mix of complete chaos and misunderstanding of what it is. And this injury sums up Tampa to me. A fucking shin split on an <laughs> umbrella stand in this confusing land. You know what I mean? That's what Tampa. That was my, that was my last cut up. I think that's my that's my last like major injury from something stupid. Let's take a quick break and tell you about our next sponsor, Raycon. I've been using my Raycons all the time now, especially during quarantine. I've been listening to Tommy Lee singles. I've been listening to Your Mom's House podcast. I've been listening to a lot of stuff right now. And the best way to listen is using a pair of premium wireless earbuds especially if you can get them at less than half the price of the other guys that's why i recommend wireless earbuds from raycon i use them to travel i use them to exercise i love them Uh, i actually got a second pair and my stepson took them he took them i I, he won't even give them back like he i hit him up and go how they working and he's like they're great you're never gonna see them again uh, so Raycon's newest model, the one he took from me, is the Everyday E25 earbuds, and they're the best ones yet. They have six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, a compact design, and a noise-isolating fit. Raycon earbuds are stylish and discreet. There's no dangling wires or stems. The company was co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Brandy, Mike Tyson, and they are obsessed with the products. Give them a try. Raycon has a 45-day free return policy, so you can make sure they're the pair of wireless earbuds for you. For a limited time, you can get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash honeydew. That's B-U-Y-R-A-C-O-N dot com slash honeydew for a special 15% discount on Raycon wireless earbuds. Make sure to check it out now while the deal's running. By Raycom.com slash Honeydew. Let's tell you about our next sponsor, Talkspace. Now, change is always a constant. And these days, it feels like there's something new to grapple with every day. We may be adjusting to this new normal, but it's still stressful. And it's important to talk about it and seek support. Talkspace Online Therapy is here to give you that support because we all need it right now. Match with a licensed therapist from the comfort of your own device and reach out 24-7 whenever something's on your mind. You'll hear back daily five days a week. It's affordable. It's a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy, but with Talkspace, you can send unlimited messages to your therapist and they'll engage with you at least five days a week. And that means you never have to wait to share what's on your mind. It's secure. It's private. They're using the latest encryption technology to store client information. Look, the bottom line is that we all need someone to talk to and Talkspace wants to give the licensed support we deserve at a price we can afford. 
As a listener of this podcast, you can get $100 off your first month on Talkspace. To match with your perfect therapist, go to Talkspace.com or download the app. And you want to make sure to use the code HONEYDEW to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's HONEYDEW and Talkspace.com. Now let's get back to the do. You, Other than, um, the, you know. I want to ask you this because you obviously were angry growing up. Mm-hmm. We've talked about Still. it. What was your the first fight? that you ever really got into who was it what do you remember well i fought when i fought when i was a kid a bunch i would just fight people me that too, would make but fun I mean, of me but no i mean when i was but like do you remember like one that i remember junior high fight the youngest fight was probably like uh yeah i mean i don't know i would punch kids that said i was that made fun of the redheaded thing that i would just fight kids you for. punch when i was in uh kindergarten or first grade my mom remembers i a kid was teasing me and pushed me and I took a toy, like a fucking train, like a wooden train and I smoked him in the face with it and I cut his face open. He's and got a he pronounced fucked. cut right here from that toy train, man. I took his ass to Panorama City. I put him in the CTE machine. He was fine. But it was, all, no, it was always, I was always uh, ready to. I was always ready even to. Even when I, but... knew, I was way skinny. I was so skinny when I was a kid. I was lanky and I just, I loved just defending myself because I thought, well, I'm not, they're not going to make fun of me because I'm definitely going to fight back. And so it ended that streak of people. Then I learned to make fun of them back and I was always clever or funnier than them or quicker than them. So people ended up, that stopped at some point, teasing me because I would just shit on them. And I realized that was better right. than fighting them because fighting them never got, I mean, that never I mean, I, yeah, we had an older kid across the way, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad I got my ass. Like, it teaches you so much about life like there's this yeah. person who doesn't know you and is ready to take you the fuck out like it does something to you when you <laughs> see someone charging you're like there's a million thoughts going through your head like yeah. oh fuck it changes your and changes the dynamic of humanity yeah. do you 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 think about humans differently yes you do you and start to like scale yeah. yourself a little and bit. then it's you weird. get older and you're like wonder what the fuck was going on in that kid's house that he beat me up every motherfucking day yeah well but you i know. remember like i lost but i always fought you yeah. know, when I was younger, I always fought. But yeah. also, it got to the point where there, some people were like, well, uh, he's. I know he's going to fight. You know, bullies don't want the fight. Never. And I know he's going to fight back. And even if I'm older and stronger, this motherfucker's going to... It's going to be 30 minutes. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. it's going to take yeah. me a lot. I'm just not going to fuck with it. Yeah. I want the easy pushover kid. That's what bullies want. They right. want to be, you know, bullies. Well, they don't, I, don't, I don't think bullies ever want to fight. No. It's funny. The kids that were the best at fighting were the ones that sat there and yeah, took the, it for the so ones long that knew and how then to, just, just to go for it yeah, yeah. <laughs> i've seen some of those well. videos on youtube where there's this kid getting bullied he just takes he finally loses it he just picks this kid up like by the throat and one arm, you know yeah, what i mean and yeah. that kid goes down like just lifeless <laughs> yeah. and he just walks away i'm like that's what i'm talking about that kid <laughs> yeah, right that's, there it's someone that's got something harbored inside of them that they mm-hmm. don't want to fight Actually, the, 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 more, the more people that are like i don't want to fight they're probably pretty good at fighting yeah. because they just said like i don't want i don't need this but then their defense mechanism kicks in I think bullies, bullies who pe- people who like pick fights. There was always guys that like picked fights. I think they just love the attention, and they wanted they wanted the negativity and the chaos because that's obviously a reflection of whatever else is going on in life, right? Like like yeah. you said, what's going on at home? Something bad. Yeah. If you got if you if you, we we all knew we were friends with kids that had shitty shitty how shitty things at home, and they always were so fucked up, so troubled, so dangerous, so like they're reckless. You know, like they just didn't give a fuck anymore. Cause what's this? This can't be worse than my dad smacking my mom around. No or, fucking or, or me, me around. Yeah, that's right. That's usually how that goes. When you see exactly. that, you're like, man, this poor motherfucker. He'll yeah. never make it out alive. Yeah, we had a friend that would just. He was that guy in college that would just. You know, if you were sleeping on the couch at the beach, he'd just burn your feet with a cigarette. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like literally, you're asleep, just put it right on your feet, and For it would no make reason. it was fucked up. It would make me laugh because it's not me, but yeah. they would be screaming at him, but they would know. <laughs> like, what am I gonna do to this kid that's not happening at home? You yeah. know what I mean? He's already He's damaged. Bro- yeah. This dude's already broken. He's burning you with cigarettes. But for, that's really funny, for, by the way. Cigarette on the feet is hilarious. Don't fall asleep around me, babe. <laughs> that's what he would do. You'd be laying on a couch with your bare feet up at the beach, and he'd just be sitting there playing a video game with cigarette. He'd be, <laughs> so they'd be like, ah, what the fuck, man? <laughs> Putting cig- did you ever? Did you ever know people that did that shit? They put a cigarette out on them to prove like how how tough they were on their tongue. I've yeah, seen the was tongue so thing. Like, how dumb I, is that? I saw yeah. kids do that all the time. I just knew guys that would do it on their hand. They thought that was fucking hardcore. There's something I saw at a party one time that I just. 
it bothers me to this day. It's probably a reason it didn't happen, but it bothers me to this day that it didn't happen. And then I wasn't the one given the opportunity, but there was this fucking dick just running his mouth to everyone talking shit to the women, you know, just being a real fucking piece yeah. of shit to everybody. And one guy uh, said something to him and he was like, oh, oh, is that right? And he gets on his knees and he puts his hands behind his back. And he's like, I'll give you the first motherfucking shot. And I was like, <gasps> like, oh, you all oh, gets this. on his knees. And it, it, it intimidated that guy that he didn't do anything. He's like, that's what I thought, you fucking pussy. And he stood up and I just <sighs> thought, God, I would have punted <laughs> your I would have punted your yeah. fucking head. I would have punted that <laughs> motherfucker across the goddamn room. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, I'm like, it. you're going to. And he put his. Put his chin up, put his hands behind his back, closed his eyes, and yeah. got on his knees. And I was like, "Oh, please, can I Call- st- time out? <laughs> time out. <laughs> back up. Let me get. I'm back up. Get a running start. Up. You got to <laughs> stop. I would have punted him. that motherfucker. He would have been it probably yeah, would have killed call, him. He called that dude's bluff, huh? He did. Hard. Jesus Hard. Christ. Embarrassing front. Now, I've never forgotten that, and I've also simultaneously been mad at that guy for not doing it because I really wanted to see that guy mm-hmm. shut the fuck up, but also like. Man, how come that one didn't swing my yeah, way? Yeah, I know, because you would have done it. That's, Punched that's my, why. I would have kicked. You're right. I would have kicked him right up under that motherfucking <laughs> chin, busted all his teeth out and everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, uh, and I've got a lot of chipped. I've chipped teeth from sports and fights and stuff. I, little, I got, yeah, well, this well, is my newest chip. <laughs> what happened to that? Right this there? is New Orleans. <laughs> it's New Bro, Orleans. I went to a bachelor party in January. Yeah. Well, probably the last one I'll ever go to. Um, I went to a bachelor party in January with a good friend. We had such a great time. Uh, we're, we're, we're doing mushrooms. We're drinking. We're smoking. We're having a great time. We went to a Pelicans game. We had so much fun. We're taking boats on the bayou. I mean, it's like one of the best weekends I've had in a long time. Then we're having a crawfish boil mm. and I'm fucking ripped. I'm lit up. I'm on everything. I'm fucking lit up. I'm on everything. I'm on everything. We're pouring the cra- we're pouring uh, we're pouring the uh, crawfish on the on the table, potatoes, sausage. You know, I'm watching. Uh, I'm watching. It wasn't the Super Bowl yet. No, it was. It was Super Bowl. Yeah, it was the Super Bowl because we went inside. Then the afternoon we watched from the inside. So I'm I'm outside. We're on this patio, and I'm watching TV. And as I'm ta- I'm you know taking off the sh- I'm deshelling and I'm eating and I'm not really watching. I'm just doing it. It's like second nature, you know. Well, I hadn't taken a shell off all the way and I had put it in my mouth and I bit down on a shell and it chipped my fucking front tooth. I mean, tooth. how the fuck did a shell do that? I don't know. Did you feel it come out right away? Oh, yeah. Right away. I was like, and my buddy's like, well, I was like, it chipped my fucking tooth. I was also lit up. So, but I must have bit down hard on it and I cracked right through it, right in my front fucking tooth. And I did that thing. I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh, no, dude. I did the same fuck. thing. Fuck. <laughs> I was like, I'm never, when am I going to get this fucking fixed? I called my old lady drunk. I'm like, I chipped my tooth on a crawfish shell. She's like, oh my God. Oh my God. But no shit, we went to get shrimp po' boys the next day. I said this on stage. The next day we go to get shrimp po' boys. And if you ever chip a tooth, you play with it a little bit. Because you, you, can, you, can you can't stop feeling it. All you can do. And I'm in line. I'm, I'm doing this, you know. I'm like, oh, oh. It's like driving me nuts. And the guy behind the counter, I get up to, I get up and he's ready to take my order. And he goes, uh, he goes, what's up with your mouth? Because he sees me. I'm doing it kind of like erratically. Like, he probably think I'm a fucking crackhead, you know? Like, I wiggling. love that he's asking you. Goes, What's up with your That's mouth? That's New Orleans. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right? literally, yeah. I, I said, I said, I chipped my tooth. He goes, For real? I said, I chipped my tooth. Like, I chipped my tooth. Uh, I was fucked up, you know, drinking and, and, and smoking weed and eating crawfish. I chipped it on a crawfish shell. He goes, Oh, yeah, that's New Orleans. Just like that, real, real casual. <laughs> yeah, that's New Orleans. Like, it was no, like, I heard that. I feel that. <laughs> It gave me some solace. I was <laughs> yeah. like, oh, okay, cool. Because yeah. in his mind, he was like, yeah, that's some dumb shit that does happen when you're fucked up in New Orleans chewing on crawfish. And for no, I mean, I, for some reason, too, I remember the moment it was happening, I, I feel like I knew it was going to happen. Do you know what I mean? When I was mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, I could have stopped it if I just looked down and what was what was in my... I was just putting shit in my mouth, not paying attention, and I just bit down too hard. Got caught in my front tooth and then... Fell right off. I called my dentist. He was like, ooh, I don't, that's going to be tough to bond. It's right on the cut, too. So that's exactly what happened to me. But yeah. like a bigger moron, I had a fucking keychain, and it had come just a little bit apart. So I put it in my mouth, and uh-uh. like I had a bunch before, and perfectly balanced it. And to gently bite it down, and it slipped. <sighs> and it carved out the front just like that. But here was what was funny. 
if you looked at it straight on, you couldn't see it. Sure. If I tilted my head just just a, <laughs> uh, you could see a fucking cut like a motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if I if I if I level headed you the whole, yeah, you'd never as see soon it. As you get a but just a, I couldn't even I couldn't even give you a what's up. No, man, I just had to stay still. Oh, you, you smile, but you what's up? Oh, like this. it was a cut that hit, so it dug into the front and cut under. You know what I mean? Like yeah. carved oh, yeah. out a piece. So same thing. I go to the dentist. He's like, this is gonna be tough. He bonded this motherfucker. It's still there. This is why I even when I wipe my teeth, this one gets a little. It's still a touch yellower. Yeah, but it's a real tooth, though. Right? It's still my real okay, tooth. Okay, good. But he put a bigger because of where it is. He had to cover more of the tooth with it, so that really all I have is a cut like that in there. But it looked, it just looked so fucking. All I could think was hillbilly. Yeah, it looked so fucking <laughs> hillbilly, and I couldn't stand looking. I, I would just go. I'm like, God, what the fuck? You biting keys? Like, yeah. You have good teeth, you <laughs> dumb motherfucker. Now, at this point, I don't give. I think I'm gonna leave it. Honestly, it's so small. I wouldn't even notice it if you didn't say something. But now about you it. do. Yeah, yeah I yeah. see it. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm at a point in my life when I, I'm just I I'm leaving it. it. I'm leaving it. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Yep, it's the sunscreen on the nose. I'm not rubbing that shit in. <laughs> it's zinc. It's zinc for my white <laughs> ass. I used to be embarrassed zinc. about that. Yeah. Rub it in. Now I'm like, leave it on. Fuck it. Leave it on. God I gotta get protection. It. But yeah, no, I, uh, that was, that was, th this was a, a reminder that as I get older, uh, I I'm caring less and less about, I, like, I, I would have panicked about that 10 years ago and that would have been on my mind. I had to get to a dentist. Now I don't think I give a fuck. I'll say that the, uh, of the silver lining mm. of this virus and it's shoving us all into our homes and literally turning a mirror on society and showing us what fucking pieces of shit we are on planet earth and outer space from the the racism the riots the murders the politics the everything. religion everything yeah. we are just we not suck. doing a great job as no. human beings on this planet it has really been like wow we, we we're just bad like collectively when you look at it you're like god damn y'all we got to do a better job here. yeah i think we don't i think we just don't uh i think we've proven that we um that a lot of people don't care about anybody but themselves which by the way your prerogative it's a sad existence but it's a bummer it's a bummer that a lot of people are a like lot. it's about me man it's a like lot. all right you know i'm not saying give up your whole life for strangers no. I, I i'm not saying that i'm just saying like small sacrifices and small thoughts about other people to me this seems like this would be a no-brainer like oh come on man this is we can knock something like this out that's but why just, I'm excited to do these scholarships we're going to do here at the music center and stuff yeah, with these that's kids. Really good, I want to help kids out. You know, I want to help I people. Know. Look, man, I, we were talking about this before. I, all I've wanted to do since I was a kid, I've never said this. I've never told this to anyone. I'm about to say it on this show. Like, all I've ever wanted to do was be a comedian. Mm -hmm. I had Eddie Murphy's headshot in my locker in the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. People had fucking chachi and shit. When you open my locker <laughs> yeah. up, it was Eddie Murphy in a black leather jacket yeah. or, or the Adidas with the, you know, smile and that yeah. Eddie Murphy smile in my locker. I've wanted to be a comedian forever, be involved in comedy, do comedy. Same. And just like you and everyone else in here, we have thrown our lives into this art form that might... <laughs> Might be gone. Might be you know gone. what I mean? It might be gone. This might be it. So at this point, be nice to people yeah. and do but do whatever the fuck you want because it doesn't matter in the end. It mm -hmm. does, we talked about all these jobs like these athletes, these these photographers, anything in the arts is, that that involves people. DJ, you think of it. Whatever involves a crowd is yeah. in jeopardy at this point. It's in limbo, right? And there's going to be a lot of shift to different things, and you're either going to thrive or you're going to fucking fall. But in the meantime, you want that fucking tattoo on your face? Get it. Get it. Get it. Get two of them. Get it. <laughs> Get it. Fuck that job interview you think you want and need so bad. Get the tattoo on your yeah. face. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. whatever you want. As long as you're not hurting anyone, then do whatever the do fuck you want. Because life doesn't give a... It ain't 2020 that doesn't give a fuck about anything. Yeah. It is life that doesn't give a fuck about what it's you true. want to do. Yeah, it's true. Well, there's no, like, you know, this put a pause on on what we love doing the most is stand-up. I mean, I love doing podcasts so fucking much, uh, but I miss the thing that fueled kind of my nighttime fire. You know, it was it's just It's the like, heroin. There's, yeah. It doesn't matter whether it's your, your, your wonderful series or a podcast or whatever. All that shit, you know, it's... It, we're recording ahead now to do other shit. So it could yeah. be weeks before you listen to this or hear it and... 
there's there's no and but there's no live audience. There's nothing like the yeah. There's nothing like that feeling, fe- good or bad. Yeah. There's nothing like the immediate feedback of stand up comedy. You, even if you're in, I'm in, I'm in the number one blockbuster film of the year. When's it come out? It's gonna be another eight months. You know right. what I mean? That's it, that that doesn't feel the fucking. Same. I know. I, I was thinking about that when I was having a. Uh... I was having one of those reflective sessions. I talked to Rogan for a while, you know, the other day because he was talking about, you know, saying goodbye and all that stuff before he takes off. And I was like, man, it's so crazy that not too long ago we were in a fucking arena filled with people. An arena. I mean, it, just months ago. It's crazy. And he was he was like, man, isn't that fucked up? And we were supposed to go to Vancouver for 420 and all these plans that had kind of gone by the wayside that I had had so much excitement for. All I want to say to myself and to the public is when it does come back, we can't fucking wait to come. Like I can't wait oh. to go back. Like I want, I am so excited for when it comes back. Cause I still have hope. It's going to be the best. Tour. I'm going to have the most fun on tour that I've ever had in my fucking life because that's exactly go ahead. You realize say how fleeting it is. It's like, I'm going to have so much yep. more fun, man. I cannot fucking wait. Yes. Like, like something I started that I, I, I kind of got away from because I, it just didn't work. But I was doing this Fridays with a fan where I just had fans email from whatever city. And it was like, we're, I'm going to pick somebody and we're going to kick it during the day. Cause I was doing weekends. Mm-hmm. I, I changed cause I was doing small theater. So it, it, that was harder cause it was on a Tuesday or what, but people have to work, you know, but I was doing Fridays with a fan, making people take off work and kicking it with them. And it was so much fun. And I know when the, when the tour comes back, regardless uh, of when, I'm, I want to do that again. Just because it was just so like, it just made me feel how important it was in terms of what I was doing socially. It was like having fun with a fan, also enjoying a city, and then going to have a good show at night. I mean, it was just like the trifecta. It was so fucking, oh, it made me soak up what I was doing a little bit more. And I want to get back to that. So I hope when we do get back, it'll be that kind of vibe of like, yeah, just eat it up, dude. You know, eat I never sat in my hotel room. I never, I never ever sat. You know, I know guys that sit and they just jerk off and watch TV until the show. Never, dude. I always was out, always out trying to find some shit, do some shit. Cause you, cause it's your life. You forget. You're like, bro, this is, it's not another week in another city. This is your, you're it's still your alive. Yeah. Right it's my now. job. I'm yeah. alive. This is my life. I can't just do this and then go, well, I just can't wait to get home. It's like, that's not it. You have to live while you're living because yeah. otherwise, look at what happens. They take it, it take, gets taken away from you. I'm saying, like, I never thought I would say anything like this to my kids, but hey, if you don't want to go to college, fuck college. Fuck college. Just be happy. I'm telling because right now, nobody's going to fucking college. Right. I, right we're, I was literally on a Zoom call this morning with a bunch of other fucking parents for kindergartners. Mm. Uh, my stepson's going to be a senior. I can't imagine. You know, I don't blame him one bit that he feels like school's over. Yeah, it feels like that because you don't have to go to that fucking building. Yeah. And guess what? I would too if I was 17. Same, same. I'd be like, fuck, fuck this. that. Yeah, I'd be fuck out. that. This isn't what I was signed up for. It's right. what we have to do now. So for a lot of people like us, like, oh, well, you're not missing anything. It's like, yeah, well, with hindsight, I don't really give a fuck about graduating. I mean, I can't. Yes. Yes. I, would I put all the nerves and anxiety and the pomp and circumstance of literally walking down the aisle and graduating from high school? No, no, no. But no. to a kid that has been busting their ass, there's valedictorians out there that right. aren't going to be able to get up and speak. And, you know, so it's many wild. things going on. Zoom speeches. Zoom. Yeah. That's what I was on today. A fucking Zoom call. So, you know, I don't know how the fuck I'm going to this. This country is about to get a whole lot dumber with these parents, us parents. We, we, we were told we had to do this shit once. I got I don't even know how to do yeah. the math. Y'all you change math, bro. I can't. This I can't. country's about to be it's already dumb. It's about to get real fucking. Well, I would dumb say, with I would just say put them to work, you know, put them to work. Even mm-hmm. the even the kindergartner, put them to work. Just it might be a in shift the like that. Get in, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to bring all the kids in here and be like, let's go. Yeah. Let's Let go. them teach each other and mm-hmm. shit. Find the smartest kid and all and I'll just talk, let just talk to him for a couple hours because I, I like I don't know how i would deal with that i have a friend could you imagine right now though being 16 and told you just got to stay in the house with your parents every fucking day and take class on a computer you'd be like fuck Fuck that that. fuck that yeah that'd be too hard man way too hard yeah i don't get it and i don't know i don't know man i don't know what the future of that even means especially because we live in a city so i'm saying who knows what the future of anything is do whatever the fuck Fuck you want that's it have some fun have fun that's it like if this doesn't help you with stress and anxiety, then you haven't been that stressed out. Mm-hmm. This is a this is telling you right now that, hey, all that shit that you thought mattered, it doesn't. No. It can be taken away. We we always think about, you know, 
don't want to take tomorrow for granted. It could be taken away. Usually when we all mean that, I, I mean, at least for me, especially I'm talking about death. Yeah. It can be, ta- it's gone. That's what I usually think. Right. Of. Yeah. It can be gone. To- you don't think like, yeah, but uh, you're going to have to sit in your fucking house while there's a goddamn virus out there. Like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. You're like, is it going to kill me? <laughs> no. Nah. No, not right now. I can watch TV. The oh, air, no. the wait, air wait, won't no. be deadly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. All the food I need and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. But I can't do stand up. No. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, what? Can't go to work. Mm-mm. I mean, that, yeah. that, that, that's my only hope is this that. Is uh, to, it is time to do what the fuck you want out yeah. there and go for it. Whatever it is. Yeah. And, 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 uh, Face tattoo it up. Get a face tattoo. Get that motorcycle. Yeah. Don't wear the helmet. Ah, fuck that <laughs> out. It's increasing the death rate. Yeah. Fuck it. it Seatbelt's gone. <laughs> fuck the rules. At this point, why the fuck not? Yeah, I think have some fun. I think have some fun. Try your best. That's all. I'm, I always say that to people. I'm like, oh, try your best. I don't know. Fuck it. You know what I mean? What are you going to do? You, this thing is, this thing is going to be what it is for a while, and then we'll come out on the other side and we'll look back and go, God damn, that was fucking wild. But who knows what the other side looks like. So in the meantime, I'm just going to keep plugging away, having fun. And then, uh, maybe we'll make it out and be okay on the other side. Maybe not. And if not, whatever, whatever, it was all right. All right. I, it, it's been a great, you know yeah, what? It's been all right. If you'd have told 16 year old me that yeah. I would have had any of the experiences I've been fortunate enough to have in this crazy business. Yeah. I would have been jumping through the roof. Same. Same. Wait, what? I get to go do Joe Rogan's podcast? Yeah, and it's going to be one of the biggest shows in the world. What? You know, I get to have yeah. fucking Tommy Lee on my sixth. What? Yeah, it's wild. Get the it would. You'd be jumping up, hundred percent, fucking down. Yeah, hundred percent. I think about that stuff too. Sometimes. And they're like, yeah. yeah, it's going to go great for you. You're going to be doing so good. Oh, yes. But wait, what? But then there's this virus. That, wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> I get AIDS or something? No, no, no. The whole world's going to get it. What? <laughs> What are you it's, talking global about? Yeah, it's, it's global, global AIDS. Lung, it's lung AIDS. And it's uh, things are going to just get shut down. You're not yeah. going to be able to do anything. Your shit's going to suck like, for a while. All right. Okay. But I would have taken mm-hmm. it. I would have taken the hit. Yeah. Like, fine, I, I would, that's fucking... what I'm saying. Yeah, fine. I would take the hit. Our water's yeah. not poison. Our air's not poison. No. Like, this fucking sucks. We all, there ain't a person out there It's like, I'm thriving. Maybe there is. I do want to meet the no, motherfucker. There's, there's, now. Some, there's some people that are, you know that are doing yeah, well. Yeah, there's some billionaires. There's some billionaires being like, I've made more money. I want to meet the power walker out there. It's like, what? 2020 is my year. You know what I mean? Like, I want to. That's what we, we should do a podcast called 2020 was my year. My year. And my talk investments to people are paying off in dividends. <laughs> my fourth yacht is doing very well. Thank you. I diversified my portfolio more than I ever have. You know, there are people making big money, yeah. big, big money. Yeah. But, uh, God bless the people that are out of work that are trying to fucking make it work and 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 trying to get back to yeah. functioning because that's I mean, tough. I get it's that. That's fucking tough. scary for everybody. Yeah. Even if you have money, even if you have money, at some point most people didn't have money. A lot of people yeah. born into it. And you remember when twenty dollars meant a lot? Oh yeah. I remember when twenty dollars was a weekend. Yeah, forty was scary to get out of the ATM. Yes. Remember that when you're like, yes, forty f- bucks. What the fuck am I gonna do? Two tw- this is two weeks. This is half the month right here, She's guys. Got two weeks out of the fucking ATM. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was scary. I it remember was. taking out forty bucks, being like, "Woo, woo, woo, like woo. We, got a budget." Like, oh, my knees I'd buckle. Hide the like. other twenty. <laughs> Don't use it. Yeah. Don't use yeah. it. That was like the first time we went to Vegas. We were sober. I had a hundred dollars, and I was like, "I can't lose all this. I can't lose this hundred dollars in Vegas." And I spent it within the first like six hours, and I was panicking. I was like, "I fucking lost all my fucking money." I, I was knew when, my mind. I knew when our neighborhood was not great in Baltimore. When I could go to the Provident Bank, it was called Provident Bank, mm-hmm. and a minimum withdrawal was five bucks. <laughs> I swear to God, you could get a five out. Five bucks. Yes. Just give me five, bro. You could in that Baltimore neighborhood. And people got it. Too. They needed it. I got it. Yeah. I would get, I'm over there slipping a five out just to go to McDonald's and shit. You yeah. know, like, ah. Just five. Just five. Just five. Can you give me four? Is four good? <laughs> Is it? It's only three ninety nine. I did Just hit me with four and I'll walk. <laughs> five bucks. Before the debit card and all the bang, bang, right. bang, you know, right. all that shit. Five bucks. You and now get out cash of is out. No one's going to use cash anymore. No one's anymore. touching it. Coins are gone. Yeah, but you know what? I'm okay with coins. Get the fuck out of here with yeah. the coin thing. They got to go. We don't need them. No, they we do. don't need them. I think they got to go. I'm ready for. I'm ready for a cashless society. I know. All right, it let me terrible, ask you this but... question. I haven't asked anybody this. Yeah. Let's say hypothetically, live entertainment. You could still podcast, whatever. Stand yeah. up. Stand up's gone though. Yeah. Forever. They come out and they say, "No, nah, it's illegal. Banned. It's never going to happen again." <laughs> Good. What are you going to do? What would you do? We're too old to go for but I'm sports still do, are gone. But I'm still too. doing all my other shit. You could do podcast. Yeah, all that shit. What would you do though to fill the void of stand up? I'd probably 
I'd probably pack. Well, first of all, I'd keep podcasting and I try to do the TV show if I could still act, but I would, uh, I'd honestly focus more of my time on creating different shit, which is kind of what we're trying to do right and now. Like I'm I would doing. just keep trying to create different new shit. Yeah. Um, I would secretly, my secret. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, w- I want to make music so bad more than anything. But I don't really want to give it to anybody. I don't want to put it out anywhere. I'm not well, trying to achieve. Are you a singer? You talking about no producing? Yeah, I want to just make music. You're gonna people. rap? No, I want to make music with people. Okay. I don't know. I don't. I don't care what it is. I just want. I would love to be. I'd love to be a producer. I would love to produce with people. Give my influence. Give my opinions. I can play a couple instruments here and there. What do you play? <laughs> Name it. What do you, you play? Guitar. I played drums piano? when I, I played drums when I was young. Really? That was like my foray into music. Yeah, I learned on drums when I was a kid, and then. My mother took him away to, yeah. Yeah, right. School yeah. slipped a little bit. She was like, you're not going to get to bang on fucking drums if you can't get a C, you know? I was like, I'll find what, you know. It ain't going to matter in 2020, it's mom. It's when the pandy hits. <laughs> the pandy. When the pandy hits, this ain't going to matter, mama. <laughs> yeah, music, music. I would yeah. love to learn, and I would love to learn, I would love to learn more of the digital space of music because I'm fascinated with it. I'm fascinated by by digital i think it's crazy i know it's not people's favorite you know people still love you know cr- physically making music with instruments but there's something about digital that's so that's mind bending to me i think it's the future of of everything i think at some point we'll just only use instruments are fucking are tough it's hard to lug around all that that big ass drum set and i know it's the sound is better i know it feels better for those that play but i'm fascinated by digital music there's something about it that all that sound is captured and created right in a thing and i can just I can manipulate it a billion different right. ways. You can do more with it than an instrument actually can. At some yeah. point, right? I mean, yeah. it's because it's because it's it's ge- it's generated all the sounds it could possibly generate. But nothing sounds better than that. But I just think there's something about mu- I've always had, had I've always had a kin to music. I've always had like an uh, obsession with ingesting it and, and wanting to make it. But I just don't. If I had the time, that's what I would do. I would spend all my nights making music. Duncan Trussell tried to get me into some shit. He wanted me to order one of those fucking. Uh, Oh, what do they call it? It's like a board with all those plugs. And he's yeah. like, oh, yeah. he I watch Sha- Shaq loves that shit. It you is see? wild. Yeah, yeah, it's wild. There's, I, can't, I don't yeah. know why I can't know the name, but I'm gonna, I'm stupid. But Duncan and I were messing with that for hours. And I was fascinated with how cool it was. It was just so intricate and also simple. He's like, you can make it whatever you want. There right. doesn't have to have any kind of rhythm or movement to it. He's like, it is what you want it to be. And I, I don't know. I like that. I like that a lot. I was That I think is my little secret that one day maybe I'll get into if I can ever get the balls to like go buy the shit and just sit down and do it for hours and hours. That's I'm just going to keep, like I was telling you before this, creating shows, different Mm -hmm. shows, lead with comedy. You're already making mostly. Yeah. But you know, we've got some other really cool shit coming up, but, uh, and then just help kids. Yeah. I want to help kids. I want to help people that, you know, this show definitely does, which I never even set out to do that. I just, I love comedians and I've always loved talking to someone who can, tell you the worst fucking story and still make you fucking laugh mm-hmm. so hard about yeah. something in there right where you're like who is this person that can fuck so i've been fortunate with this show that i've gotten to fall in love with comedians all over again and just yeah. reappreciate how fucking not only fucked up they are but how they can take <laughs> that fucked up and make it and make it funny yeah you know yeah so. no that it, no it is that is a it, it is a blessing for sure to like uh there's no doubt. I say that all the time to my old lady. I always say, because well, we're sick, something's wrong with us. We see things really weird. And it's not like I'm saying we're not special. I just know that when I speak to other people, the way we see things is just like, an in, it's an inch off center. It's like a yes. little bit like, because I say stuff and someone will go, oh yeah, I didn't know. And it's in my mind, I'm like, that's very normal. I can't believe you don't think about it like that. Me too. For the yeah, longest time. I'm like, why, why is that? Yeah. Well, it's because we just have a little bit, the, uh, we just view it a little bit differently. I, and- if you, if you have comedy in your blood there's something about it that's that was my whole family was that way yeah. certainly none of them were stand-up comedians but they would make light of this tragedy and always drop a joke in there right. always switch a gear you always a something and you're yeah. like i'd rather run with that pack of people than the the woe is me uh you know pity party people yeah, over that. here like yeah. fuck that we same problems we're just doing a lot differently totally dealing with yeah them. To- well that's yeah. that's I think it comes from uh, comedy has almost uniquely uh, in its history always come from not not just tragedy but from uh, hardship, yeah, right? Like pain, most suffering. most of the funniest yeah. people you know came from tough places. I'm not saying you need to come from a tough world to be funny. I've said that before, but 
Um, it helps, I guess. I don't know. I think something about it helps because it shapes the way you view the world. If everything exactly. is hunky dory, point of view. Exactly. it's kind of like, you know, what do you have to, your perspective is not that harsh because you didn't really have to live the harsh. Right. Right. It's like, if you never wrote a bus, you wouldn't know how to write a joke about riding the bus. That's right. But even if you never wrote a bus, never wrote a bus, if I've written a joke funny enough about that bus, you'll relate. You'll to get it. it. Yep. Yeah. Even if you never rode the bus, that's right. So there's something about that. There's something about that. The things that bind us. I'm watching a good show, by the way, called Connected on Netflix. You should watch. Okay. It's fucking brilliant for people that are listening. If you if you were looking for a new documentary series, it's all about how we are inherently completely interconnected. As no cliche doubt. as it sounds, we are. This show breaks it down to the simple. The dust in the Saharan desert is affecting the way you eat and the way mm -hmm. things grow and the way it's just something so minute always translates into a million other things mm -hmm. it's fascinating dude how it affects the amazon and how it rains there and and the patterns of which affect the way food grows that gets to you the way the ocean eats the way it blocks it's just like it's 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 the most fascinating connected. shit connected connected so on I'm Netflix. i'm gonna watch yeah. connected and yeah. dave on Hulu. Watch Dave on Hulu. Yeah, if you if you got if you have Hulu, I love you, dude. Watch it. Please I love you plug too. Plug everything again. Yeah, no. Watch Dave on Hulu. Uh, it's we're coming out with another season next year, but in the meantime, watch Bad Friends, me and Bobby Lee's podcast on YouTube and everywhere you could listen to it, and uh, Whiskey Ginger, uh, which is my solo show with a with a, with a guest. Sick Dog was on it. You're gonna come back and do it I'd now that we're to. in the new studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And hang out. And uh, other than that, dude, you know, keep supporting this community because this is what keeps us going right now because we can't be out there seeing you so this helps so appreciate you appreciate appreciate you, I appreciate you. you too, appreciate brother. you brother uh as always ryan sickler on all social media ryan uh we'll talk to y'all next week mm -hmm.